This mystery has been left unsolved for nearly 20 years. Whose skull is this in the Jurassic Park 3 Avery? Because as the movie leads us to believe, them Jurassic Park 3 Pteranodons have been stuck inside that Avery since its beginning and were only let loose at the end of the movie. It's always assumed it was the skull of a very unfortunate InGen worker who met a terrible fate. But this isn't the case and I will tell you why. I find it hard to believe considering the only way you would have been viable prey to a Pteranodon in that cage is if you left the enclosed walkways. Because obviously during his operation, none of these walkways would be decrepit or falling apart. During its heyday, it would have been completely enclosed and unsealed. So a worker being taken from that walkway or enclosure is simply out of the question. It would have had to have come after the fall of Isla Sauna slash Site B. So the skull belonging to an InGen worker just doesn't seem to fit in this case. Now the movie has us believe that the Pteranodons in the Avery are trapped in there until they release during the scene where they leave the gate open. This is entirely false, as we actually see pteranodons at the end of the Lost World Jurassic Park, essentially Jurassic Park 2. So we know pteranodons are already loose on Isla Sauna. But that gives us another question. The whole Avery begs the question, why are they Jurassic Park 3 pteranodons trapped inside, while some others are seen 3 in the Lost World? Who created them and why? It is quite obvious that the two pteranodon species are entirely separate, as one of the species species was made initially for Jurassic Park and I believe the other species, the ones we see in the Avery, were part of the experiments Dr. Wu was doing when he landed on Isla Sauna. Now I'm not going to go into detail on what he was doing on Isla Sauna but you can check all that out in another video I've done on the channel, hence why we see these pteranodons with bigger teeth and more aggressive in nature as opposed to the smaller ones from the Lost World Jurassic Park. That completely answers that question but it doesn't answer how the skull got inside of the Avery in the first place. Well, we now know that there are two separate species of pteranodon on that island, and it is entirely possible that there's a little tear in the Avery for them to enter in and out. Although we see them open that door, essentially giving us the nod that they've left the Avery, we knew they left the Avery way before that anyway because of the Lost World Jurassic Park. So with that knowledge now, it is entirely possible for pteranodons to leave the Avery and get their prey, but it doesn't answer who this skull belongs to or when that happened. Another possibility to consider is it might be one of the men from the InGen hunting party in the Lost World Jurassic Park. I could easily see a few stragglers having escaped the long grass scene only to get majorly lost and never be able to regroup with his crew. The guy could have then trekked all the way to the Avery thinking it would be a place, safe place for shelter only to become baby pteranodon food. Now although that is definitely an option I find that one an unlikely candidate because that skull to me looks quite fresh in nature. If it had been sat there for nearly half a decade, it'd be a lot more worn, maybe not even in that nest at all. So I think that one is out of the question. The same theory goes for scraps left behind in the Lost World. Obviously we see the Lost World T-Rex stepping on people, eating people, leaving half bodies left and right. A Pteranodon is probably a scavenger and could quite easily swoop down, take remains of whatever body parts, taking it back to its nest. An easy source of food for the young. Now again, for the reasons I said previous, I don't believe this to be the case either. Now a quite disturbing theory I came across on Reddit from a guy called Blargen seems to think it could have been a Costa Rican adventure or a rival company spy. Now there is a a little bit of substance to this because Biosyn were indeed active on Isla Sauna from 1999 to the year 2000. And during that period, Isla Sauna was being used as a cloning facility illegally where they made the Spinosaurus and the other genuses. Now, what potentially could have happened is that they were caught by InGen staff who decided to deal with them by tossing them into the birdcage where their death would be off the books and no one would be able to find them. Given how shady InGen's past is and how shady InGen are themselves, this is entirely possible. Now, a lot of you are probably scratching your heads at this part saying, Biosyn on Isla Sauna? Really? Yes, really, they conducted Project Regenesis, and if you want to know all about that, check out one of my other videos after you've watched this. So that, believe it or not, is a very good theory on whose skull it is, but I don't think it's the right one, but we are getting close to where I think it is. 
Now, in the grand scale of things, I do think the Pteranodons have taken more people than they let on. Obviously, we are going for this specific skull, but I do believe many more deaths are attributed to the Pteranodons. Take the Lost World Jurassic Park, for example. The boat captain did mention about fishermen that got too close to the five deaths and never returned. The local fisherman theory fits well as to why a skull ended up in the aviary, but I don't think it is a local fisherman whose skull this actually is. Now, there was obviously an illegal team of researchers sent in by InGen in the year 1997 to the year 1998 and 1999 respectively. It could have easily have been one of them researchers' teams. I mean, we already know that the Pteranodons are out of the Avery. They've escaped, so they could easily be flying around and pick anyone off, taking them back to the Avery's nest. It would fit why potentially nobody knew or went looking for this individual, because they were on Isla Sauna individually. Although this is a great theory, again, that is not the right one there is something missing there if we look back at the original skull the original skull doesn't have the way and tear of a skull left there for several years it looks fairly fresh in modern day standards so it'd have to have been someone coming from the events of jurassic park 3 now one possible theory is the fact that it could be cooper's skull now if we think back we see the spinosaurus grab cooper but we never physically see him being eaten by the spinosaurus and we never see the spinosaurus physically hungry i mean it kills a T-Rex and doesn't eat it, leaves the remains and continues to chase the humans. The chances are it would have done the same thing for Cooper, leaving the Pteranodons to come out, pick the remains and take them back for their babies. Now that is an option, although I don't see it actually happening. The likelihood is the Spinosaurus would have either A, completely crushed the skull either with its jaws or when it drops the body and stamps on it, there'll be nothing left of that skull. Not a physical skull like we see from the Pteranodons anyway. Now, there's no evidence as what happened to Cooper's body, but the likelihood is the fact the Spinosaurus either ate it or it was destroyed beyond recognition. So I do not believe it to be Cooper's skull. Now, we do have the other Merc who was trapped by the Velociraptors, and we see the Velociraptors cleanly break the dude's neck and leave the body there. Now, in doing so, that would be ripe prey for the Pteranodons, although it is in the trees. So the Pteranodons coming in, swooping the body and trying to get away would be very difficult in my eyes. So although the body body being lying there fresh, completely undamaged, with a fresh skull with no injuries. I believe the trees being there would stop the Pteranodons from taking that back to their nest. So again, that rules out that Merc, but there is some people we're actually missing. Now if you think back to the beginning of Jurassic Park 3, we see Ben and Eric floating towards the island of Isla Sona, and they are left marooned, stranded there. And why are they left marooned, stranded there? Because the boat that was, was taking them on the tour, the dinosaur boat, crashes and loses its crew. Now there is a whole debate as to how the crew of that boat got lost, who attacked them, why it attacked them, and I have a massive theory video on there, but to basically sum it up in this video, it was Pteranodons in a nutshell. Although there is different versions, the script was being written as it was being filmed for Jurassic Park 3, so there are some continuity errors, but it was definitely meant to be Pteranodons. And if the Pteranodons swooped down to that boat from the fog, where would they take them? Because there is no signs of them left on the boat, no signs of them in the water. They obviously took these bodies, the crew of the dinosaur boat, back to the Avery to feed their young. I mean, it also fits the time period. These bodies would have been there for a minimum of eight weeks, seeing the skull fairly fresh. Although very dirty, it still would have been relatively fresh for eight weeks. It would also fit as to why that skull was still in the nest and not removed, because it was very recent. Eight weeks recent. I mean, Jurassic Park 3 isn't known for its visual storytelling because there are so many continuity errors, but this would actually make a lot of sense considering it was characters we see on the screen. The movie leaves the mystery open at the beginning, and this would easily close that. And if I was writing Jurassic Park 3, I would definitely take credit for this theory and say, yep, yep, that's exactly what we intended to happen. Good job, Shadows. So in a nutshell, it was the crew of the original dinosaur boat. That is this case solved. But it does leave us with another question. What actually happened to Ben and Eric? And how did Ben actually die? If you want to know all the answers to them questions, check out all my other videos in the Solved series case on the channel. I'd like to thank my YouTube members and patrons. Thanks guys for supporting me. And if you guys want to help support me continue in making videos like this, consider becoming a YouTube member. Don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe. Can I solve Jurassic Park related theories? You bet Jurassic can. See you later.